from the beginning of the day, we had a appointment in Towson. We had an appointment in Havity Grace. The one in Havity Grace was the first appointment and that was for the heartbeat. Um, I had requested that appointment because Towson is where I would be getting testing done, but also hear the heartbeat, but Nelson wasn't allowed in due to COVID restrictions. So the OBGYN was like, no worries. You can just stop in here. We'll check the heartbeat. It'll take all of a few minutes and then you guys can head to Towson and I was like, awesome. So as you guys can tell from the clips that I just showed you, never in a million years did I ever think I'd be filming this video. Um, so I do apologize if the video is like all over the place or if I have to edit it a little bit choppy um, or if I start crying, my makeup's already messed up. So um, I've already been crying, who am I kidding? But um, thank you so much for watching and we really do appreciate it. So I'm just gonna start from the beginning. I found out I was pregnant on July 12th and I was about four weeks then. Obviously, I couldn't say anything. I wish that I could um, because I was so excited. But obviously, when you're pregnant, most people wait till you're 12 weeks. And that's what I was choosing to do um, as far as just letting everybody know. But my parents and his parents knew and a couple close friends. I felt so beautiful that morning. I just wanted to say that because I was struggling really bad with... I think I've always struggled with weight my whole life, but gaining weight so rapidly and just your body changing so rapidly is really hard at least it was for me emotionally it was easy physically but i did gain like 10 pounds we had went in and we were so excited and nelson's really shy i don't know if you guys know him he had said hello to nelson and he was like hi how are you and she was like good how are you and he doesn't really start conversation much so um, it was really like cute to hear him say like I'm really excited and she was like are you really like I don't know that just like meant so much to me especially now looking back um, so she made me like lift up my shirt and um, and it was silent and um, that was really hard because I so badly wanted to hear a heartbeat and we kept hearing mine and I'm not sure if you know this or not but when you hear a baby's heartbeat um it's like a loud thumping gallop like um it's really fast and we kept hearing my heartbeat and like she would grab my wrist to check to see if it was my heartbeat or the baby's heartbeat because at that point we had been searching for so long that it was um like you would kind of hope for anything to be the heartbeat and um my eyes were welling up with tears because i was thinking in my head i'm always i've always been a worrier like i always worry about little things if the worst is going to happen the worst of the worst is going to happen to me that's just like my mentality and i know it's kind of like negative but in that moment i nelson was at my feet and i was laying back and i was looking at the ceiling and i was staring at the ceiling and my eyes were just full of tears and I was like, don't let them see you cry because you're just overreacting. Like you're just nervous. Like I know that Nelson's going to tell you like you, like you had nothing to be worried about. Like I wanted him to say, like, I wanted to tell him like, Nelson, you are right. Like there's nothing to be worried about. And, um, the lady kept searching and searching and she was trying to comfort me. And I understand that. Um, and, she could tell I was like had tears coming down my face and she was like you know this this can be normal it's okay like I I need to go get the doctor and as soon as she shut the door I just start crying and the night before I had texted Nelson when he was at work and I was like what if something's wrong like what if tomorrow they say something's wrong and he was like you know don't say that you're just worried and I also had texted my mom and I texted her and I was like, mom, it was the night before this appointment. I was like, mom, um, what if something is wrong tomorrow? And she was like, Mackenzie, don't say that. Like, you're just worried. And she was like, why do you feel that way? And I was like, like, I don't feel pregnant anymore. And I did have a couple concerns because I did end up losing a few pounds that week. Um, my boobs had felt a lot different than they were feeling while being pregnant like when I first found out 
um, just things like that. I didn't have any cravings and I was having extreme cravings the week before, but you know, things change during pregnancy. So my mom was like, don't worry about it. You'll get reassurance tomorrow. So at the appointment, when the doctor came in, this OBGYN that I went to in Happy Grace, they didn't have an ultrasound machine there. It's just kind of like for checks and just for regular routine things. So the doctor came in with this um, little monitor. I guess it checks to see when your baby's a lot bigger to see if the head is down. And obviously my baby is not big at all. I was only 12 weeks. Well, I thought it was only 12 weeks. And when she was like looking in there, she was like, this isn't really the instrument for it. I just want to see since we're having a hard time finding the heartbeat. And I was like, okay. And at this point, Nelson's next to me and we're both like, you know, have tears running down our face. And she's like, it's really small. She's like, how long, how far along are you? Nine weeks? And I was like, no, I'm 12. Like, I was just kind of like, I didn't think anything of it. So they're like, hey, listen, we're going to send you down to the other office just so they can double check everything. Um, and I'll go down to Towson and they're going to um, just, you know, do the check, okay? And I was like, okay. And at that point, I feel like everyone around me knew. They just couldn't give me the confirmation medically. I mean, it was like, hey, listen, I've been there. Like, she was like, everything's gonna be okay. She was like, we called Towson. Um, once I confirm everything, he can come up. And I was like, okay. That's where I should have been like, I should have had my confirmation, but obviously there's still hope in your heart. You don't want to, you don't want to face that. He left and we had to drive to Towson and it was like driving to Towson in this limbo of not knowing if your baby is alive or not. And I looked at him and I was like, Nelson, I know. I was like, I know something's wrong. I know something's wrong. I could tell by the way what she said to me. He was like, just started bawling. He was like, don't say that. Excuse my voice. I'm really sorry. Um, so we got to Towson and um, when we had got there, he had to drop me off at the door because no visitors were allowed in. So they took my temperature at the door and I was just like in a zombie mode. Like I was just completely out of it. And the lady was like, you can't go in, you have a temperature because they were scanning our foreheads. And I was like, what? And she was like, you have a temperature, like you're not allowed in. And I was just like, I had tears rolling down my face. And I was just like, what do I even do at this point? Like, I don't know if my baby's alive. They're telling me I have a temperature and I can't go into this place that I have to go into. The other place has no appointments. So she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, no. And like I hadn't I had nothing to say besides like no. And she was like, oh, okay, like she was so nice. She was like she was like, wait right there, like we'll retake your temperature, like everything's gonna be okay. And I was like, okay. So she took my temperature again and it was just under. She was like, Okay, you're good, you can go in. And um, I had to go find the place and I'm sitting there waiting and as I'm waiting, I'm in a hospital mind you, so there's like a lullaby that plays overhead when a baby's being born and as I'm sitting there in a limbo, like just waiting to be taken back, like I'm hearing this lullaby and I'm like, God, I wish that was me, like I got all my paperwork done and the lady at the front desk talking to someone and she says Mackenzie and I'm like yeah and she's like you can let Nelson know he can come up now and I guess at that point like there was no visitors allowed so when he came in she had to call down to the front desk and get him allowed to even be in in the building and um I feel like that should have been another indication but I was in like I was just out of it I was just not there I guess when we went back, the ultrasound tech was next to me and Nelson was next to me. And in front of me, there's a screen showing of uh, the ultrasound. And she was like clicking around and she was like, there's your uterus, there's this, there's that. And I was like, you don't see my baby? And in hindsight, I knew that she knew immediately because when she did see the baby and measure it, she knew that it was smaller than what 
we thought it was. Um, because she had asked me how far along and she knew from the paperwork that I was 12 weeks or thought I was 12 weeks. And um, when she was clicking around, I was like, you don't see my baby? And um, she said, there's a fetus in there, but I have to do these measurements. And at that point when she didn't say baby, I should have known. I was already crying at this point, but... Literally 30 seconds later, the screen pops up and I see the baby and I can see its head. And at this point, like you can tell it's a baby. And no one could see it and you can make out that it's a baby. And all I could, all I kept doing was looking and looking and I was like, like I couldn't see like the flash. Of the heartbeat and all I wanted to see is a heartbeat and she was like got done doing what she was doing and she turned and she looked at me and she was like she turned and she looked at us and she was like I'm sorry I do see a fetus in there but unfortunately I don't see the heartbeat I have to go get the doctor now And when I tell you, I didn't cry. I fucking sobbed. Like, I fucking sobbed. And Nelson just started crying. And he's hugging me and he's like, I'm sorry. And in that moment, my phone rings. It's my mom. And it's like, it's like she knew. And Nelson answers it. He hands the phone to me sure if you know this but my parents my mom and dad have a different last name than me so obviously my mom got remarried to the person who I call dad and they had fertility issues so my dad never had a kid of his own of his own DNA I guess you could say because he's my dad but he doesn't have the same DNA and I was so excited for them to like kind of experience through me, you know, especially my dad, like pregnancy from start to finish, pregnancy from start to finish, like, you know, having an infant to hold. And when my mom called, she knew, by the way, I answered the phone. She's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I told her, and I was crying. And to hear my mom's devastation. It was really hard to hear my mom in devastation as well. Um, you know, seeing Nelson break down when he's always like strong. He's never crying. He just, he's very like optimistic. And just how hurt and devastated he was. And just to hear my mom on the phone, that hurt. And almost immediately, you think, why? Why me? What happened? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? And all I kept thinking about was how consumed I was with gaining weight and that's the first thing I blamed because I thought I was fat and I was like this is punishment so the doctor comes in and she obviously says she's sorry and she tells me that I need to go to the other office in Bel Air now so I have now went to Harvard Grace Towson and I have to go to Bel Air. And I'm like, okay, so what happens to this baby though? Like, she's like, that's why I told you to go to Bel Air. So when I went to Bel Air, of course I walk in and I open the door and the first thing I see is the most beautiful, perfectly round pregnant woman. And that was definitely tough to see 
and of course I'm so happy for anyone who's pregnant I don't want that to come off the wrong way but in that moment <laughs> in that moment that's probably the last thing that I wanted to see as if we already hadn't had enough going to the first two appointments I had to go to Bel Air and have them tell me basically what I needed to do to have the baby taken out um, I didn't bleed any I didn't have any signs of a miscarriage so my body was taking care of the baby as if I was pregnant so at Bel Air of course they told me that since I didn't have any signs of a miscarriage and my body wasn't um, you know naturally ridding of the baby I had to go into surgery what's called a DNC which um, they'd have to put me to sleep for and then they removed the baby after that I didn't know I had COVID at the time so I had drove to my parents house to pick up my dog and I saw my mom and I remember just seeing her with tears I saw her with tears running down her face and when I pulled up and she just hugged me and hugged Nelson. And Lenny, if you don't know who Lenny is, he's my uncle. He is taken care of by my parents. Um, and he obviously didn't understand what was going on. He was like, your baby died. And then I started crying, and he started crying, and he gave me a hug and kissed me in the cheek, and he means well. But it was so sad to see him sad. So that was Friday, and it was the weekend, and um, at this point, I didn't have a time for surgery. They didn't, obviously, it was like Friday afternoon, so they didn't have anything, you know, planned for me to get surgery. Um... It was really hard to sleep that weekend. It was really hard. And Sunday had come and I was just scrolling through my phone and I got an email from my doctor and it said, um, you tested positive for COVID. And that's when I was like, holy shit, did I lose my baby because of COVID? And I went in for surgery on Tuesday. I had to be escorted into the side door in a ventilated room by myself. I also wasn't allowed in the waiting room or anything like that. My mom had given me a baby blanket to take with me. Even though I would be leaving with no baby. My mom wanted to hug me so bad and I was like, Mom, I have COVID. Like, as much as, as, much as I want to hug you, like, I can't because I just lost my baby and I can't lose my mom too. But also I was short of breath and I had to ask the anesthesiologist like what would happen. And basically they were like, if you stop breathing, um, just so you know, you'll have to be put on a ventilator, I believe it's called, or incubated. Um, I'm not sure the exact word, but basically a machine will breathe for you. And that's really scary. But I asked the surgeon, like, hey, did I lose my baby because of COVID? And he was like, honestly, it's, there's a possibility, but we don't know. And when the health department called, when the COVID tracking team called, nobody gave a shit that I lost my baby. Not that I expected anyone to care, but I wanted somebody or the hospital or something, someone to be like, hey, could we take data from you for other pregnant women? So other preg like, when I was pregnant asking about COVID, they're like, we don't know, we don't know. It's because you're not looking for the information. The information's right here. Like, that's what's frustrating about this. out there because no, I don't have a definite answer of if I lost my baby to COVID. But when they told me that I had lost my baby a few weeks prior, that's when I would have contracted COVID. And that's when I, I, to me, that would be an indication like, hey, we need to get data on this girl. Like, so other women could have data, other pregnant women, other women that are having fertility issues, other women that want to get pregnant, other women that are scared while being pregnant. Like, 
nobody's looking for this information. Um, a couple of weeks later, I ended up testing positive for COVID again. So I had COVID for about 30 days. Um, my priorities have really changed and I know that COVID is inconveniencing to everyone. And I know that there's been worse situations than me, so I don't want this to seem like I'm throwing a pity party or anything like that because I personally can't even fathom losing a family member over a FaceTime call. Like, I can't fathom the devastation of that. And, like, I see a lot of people like, I can't wait for the bars to open or... You know, I see a lot of people that are like frustrated with wearing a mask and I'm frustrated too because I wore a mask and I was so careful. I was so careful. I didn't go anywhere. And I still got COVID. Also, it's not just about the mom who lost the baby. Like this has been really hard on Nelson as well emotionally because he was so happy. Like for Nelson, yeah, physically he didn't have to experience it, but emotionally he really experienced a lot of heartache and I never knew how much he loved me of course I knew he loved me but I never knew to the extent of how much this kid really cared for me and I remember hearing each other's heartbeats when we hugged one time and it was like music to my ears yeah, if you've experienced COVID or a miscarriage or any sort of loss during this time, I'm so sorry. I really am from the bottom of my heart.